Hi everyone, I'm Zephyr and today um, we're going to be talking really about it's the it's our well it's our week 15 thing today and it's a 69th episode and we're really excited to be putting it up today. And um, so I'm Zephyr Togo. I go to Lindisfarne up here in New South Wales and I'm in year seven at my school. And so the theme for this week is mentors, not saviors. And it like, so it means that even though you have your mentor, your mentor, you're like, your mentor is not everything for you. And what I really want to get out of posting today is just really, I'm really happy to be hosting today. And I'm just going to give it over to our second host. Thanks for that intro Justin, introduction, Zeph. Um, well done, mate. Right? Um, we also have uh, Steph Beck uh, co-hosting today. So you want to say hi, Steph? Jojo, uh, welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Steph and I'm co-hosting alongside Bobby and also Zephyr today. I like that comment that you made that um, mentors aren't everything for you because there's a certain amount of hard work that other people can't do for you to achieve your goals. So, um, yeah, really excited to talk to our guests today to unlock some of those learnings. For her. And I don't know if this is um, um, a fact, but I think you might be our youngest um, host on Imagination TV. So well done on doing that. We'll have to check that out for you. Back to you, Bobby. Uh, thanks for that, Steph. Well done again, Zeph. Um, yeah, look, to yesterday, on yesterday's show, we had, um, was our, our mentee show. We had 180 Seconds of Wizardry with Vanessa Ellis. We had Failure Time, and, you know, the show just was, you know, it just took off. And today, you know, our show should be just the same today. Um, today we have... Uh, Belinda Duarte, who's a creator, um, who's a CEO for Culture of Life. Um, we have uh, Leand Leandra Gekamangu, uh, who's a, a creator and founder of Leandra Swimwear. And we also have actor, writer, director, Socrates Otto with us today. So, you know, it should be a great show and we're looking forward to all the comments coming through. Right now, we're just gonna push it on over to a short video about what pays your rent and mine. Um, so today we have um, Zoe doing, she's our hoodie connector. And Zoe, um, why are you a hoodie connector? We got a little technical difficulty with Zoe, um, but Zoe's one of our hoodie connectors. Um, and, you know, she felt like being involved, like she lost her job, um, you know, during COVID-19. So she felt like it was a, a great opportunity to give something back and to also stay connected with Aang, which is a fantastic thing. W would you agree with that, Zeph? Yeah, I really would. And we really, it's always really important as one of our hoodie connectors. And yeah. Yeah, no, nah, that's right. Um, like being a, like, like you said, like it's important being a hoodie connector because, you know, we, 
it's, it's an act of kindness and, and it shows people that, you know, here at AIM, we're going to be here for our people. So, um, since, yeah, I, I'd agree with that, Zephyr. Steph, you got any thoughts on um, Zoe and a hoodie connection? Um, yeah, just really sorry we didn't get to your story today, Zoe. Um, maybe if we had some kind of sign language that we could have done, we might have been able to work it out. But thanks so much for um, jumping in on the initiative. It's, uh, I think, like with social enterprise, it could be a new way to you know, work with building the economy where people aren't a slave to um, nine to five jobs as well. So that's a really exciting thing that could come out of it as well. So thanks for all the work that you're doing. Sensational. Um, yeah, look, you know, it's, I like the way that we're, we're trying to pick up the pieces when, you know, stuff happened that's out of our control. So, you know, we just, we just got to keep doing what we're doing, Zeph, and, and we're going to be fine. Um, I think I may have made a mistake when I was introducing Belinda. Um, um, but, you know, I, I've done some, some homework on Belinda and, you know, like, I'd, I'd like to introduce um, Belinda Duarte. Um, uh, she's, I'm sorry, stumbling on here a bit. Uh, Belinda, um, gee, that's what happens when you when mistakes happen. My apologies, Belinda, um, but like we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, yeah, so Belinda um, is a, Wajabaluk, um, Jaja Warong descendant. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself, Belinda, and you can tell us a bit about yourself. No worries. Thanks, Bobby. Um, just a shout out to Acknowledge Country on, on Wadwarang Country here, uh, down on the coast at Ocean Grove. Uh, just want to pay my deepest respect to that the mob here, traditional owners here and, and whatever country. I know that there's a lot of us everywhere and all over the place across Australia and no doubt tuning in from different locations uh, globally. I give them the work of AIM. You're doing amazing stuff. So congratulations to you all. Um, I'm, uh, you know, as Bobby mentioned, my matriarchal country is Wachabalik country, northwest Victoria, um, Jajarung central Victoria is from my great grandfather, but also got the blessing of Polish and Celtic roots. Um, what I'm most passionate about really is just seeing people thrive and our mob thrive and you know, it's one of those things that, uh, particularly for young people, um, some of the, the challenges and the, the issues that we face um, in our communities uh, across the country um, as First Peoples of Australia are, are pretty confronting when you look at suicide rates and um, uh, our um, self-harm and mental health issues. So what we do is back our mob doing work with young people uh, in different sites, um, particularly around how critical culture is in making us feel um, uh, really connected, strong, um, anchored, and you know, as as a really critical protective factor for us, um, you know, in our own in our own communities across the country. Yes. Yeah, so, so Belinda, what um what landed you on our show today? Wow, <laughs> I'm not quite sure all the links and mixes, but um, you know, a, a couple of, of board members that have been on the AIM board uh, have, and are one in particular is, is our co-chair and Jason Eads, um, who was on the AIM board. Uh, Mayra Santa has been involved in some of our work, particularly our campaign work around education and advocacy, and, and particularly the voice of, of young Aboriginal uh, people, and um, you know what culture means to them or some things in particular, say January 26, um, how that affects um, wellbeing and belonging uh, within Australia and, 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 you know, pretty much spearhead some of those issues, particularly around, um, you know, what, what impact does discrimination, racism, a sense of belonging and um, ensuring that our, uh, our environment say to us um, that we are critical to the landscape of this country. Um, and yeah, so one of the pieces of work that we've done is particularly around January 26 and it's time to change. But more recently, uh, the My Australian Dream campaign. Um, and I encourage people to reach out on our, um, on our links, on our social um, platforms at Culture is Life. Um, we'd love to hear more about, you know, some of the young people out there that are tuning in and, and what their Australian dream is, particularly given uh, the experience of Adam Goods and, and how he he challenged the nation to, to really rethink about how they relate to 
uh, us as First Peoples here in, in Australia. Wonderful, wonderful. Zeph, you got any questions for Belinda? So Belinda, what really wanted to make you become what you've accomplished? Wow, well, Zeph, you know, um, first of all, I just want to say hats off, how deadly to have you mob hosting this and leading the conversation. Uh, our young people's voices are critical. You guys are going to be leading and, and creating um, an environment for my, my little girl and my nieces and nephews. So um, hats off for the, the great work you do. Um, I had a former life as a track and field athlete, Zeph. Um, and, you know, as a young girl being raised on Wadwalaan country in Ballarat, um, what my dream was was to represent the country, and I, I finished as a track and field athlete, um, as a heptathlete, loved it, but I always felt unbelievably passionate about standing up and social justice, particularly for our mob. And so each step I've taken um, has been because I felt compelled to speak. I felt compelled to do something. And we know it in our bodies, right? When something really matters to us, you can feel it. And over the journey, I feel like I've, I've been blessed with, with people and mentors that have seen something in me and encouraged me to keep stepping forward and challenge myself. So I've tried to take the philosophy of athletics and placing myself in, in environments that I feel completely uncomfortable, but I know that I'm actually going to grow from. Um, and that's one thing as a, a track athlete that I will forever be blessed for um, and will continue to do that to help myself grow. So when we go back to the theme of, of mentors, not saviours, you know, um, for me, mentors over my journey were people that saw something in me and reminded me of who I was um, and encouraged me to step into, you know, the, the fullest and best version of me at different points, even though I would be scared as hell. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, thanks for that, Belinda. Um, we may come back to you later on. Um, next, we'd like to introduce Leandra Gekamungu. Um, yeah, um, tell us a bit about yourself. Hello, um, yeah, my name is Leandra Gekamungu and I am a younger woman from Northeast Arnhem Land. Uh, my family are all from up around Millingimbi, Rumminginning. Um, and yes, that's a little bit about who I am and where I come from. Um, I am the creative director and founder of swimwear label Leandra Swim. Um, and basically I decided to create something uh, that would highlight the versatility, resilience and brilliance of Indigenous Australian culture and people. In particular, um, I swim my work to celebrate uh, Indigenous women and share the positive narratives around what Indigenous women are doing, not just in their communities, but on a national level and, and on a global level as well. So um, each of our swim pieces are named after yeah, different inspirational and groundbreaking Indigenous women. Uh, that go out to our customers, they get to read a little bio so um, they can learn more about what Indigenous women, the impacts, the, the positive impacts that they're having on, you know, the broader community and world and, yeah. Um, each of our signature prints are a representation of my Aboriginal culture in a more modern twist and, um, yeah, so that's sort of what I do and what Leandra Swim is all about, in a little nutshell. <laughs> Nutshells are good. Nutshells are good. Nice little snippets. Um, so with our, our theme this week, Mentors Not Saviors, is there is there a link between Mentors Not Saviors and design with, with what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think that especially through, you know, how we name our swimwear. Um, my goal is to create a grassroots movement between my brand, Leandra Swim, and also the, the woman that's wearing the piece. Um, you know, my goal is to create a, a new set or, or a new awareness around um, 
you know, Indigenous, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women that uh, are great mentors, are doing amazing things and, you know, starting, yeah, those uh, conversations in the home where they're orga organic, where they're authentic and, yeah. Now, okay. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, you know, being you know, trying to take care of our young people and, and young indigenous women in particular um, is, is, is a wonderful thing. Um, Steph, you got any thoughts on that? I think it's incredible what you're doing, Leandra. Um, one of the key learnings that's coming through um, from the shows that we're having on how to create change is storytelling and just sharing um, your story to create a new narrative and understanding of other people. So having that mixed with also this... Um, this incredible product we are using uh, recycled plastic from the ocean is amazing. And I really just take my hats off to you because I saw some of this stuff online this morning. I thought it was incredible. Um, I also saw like earlier on after you did a trade show, you are approached by somebody um, to, they asked if you wanted to be in like a tourist shop and you kind of pushed yeah. back on that and you were like, no, this is designer wear, this is quality. Yeah. So like, just how, how important is that self-belief to you and what you're doing and what other opportunities did that lead to? Yeah, so um, I suppose flipping back to that, um, the whole, one of the really big points of why I started this brand on a personal level is, you know, I, I grew up surfing, I grew up at the beach, I grew up with a million pieces of swimwear. But the other thing that I also was aware of is the stereotypes and where Indigenous Australia was being represented or uh, where we were almost allowed to be viewed and experienced. And I felt like that was very heavily, you know, in, tourism in, in the tourism industry and as well in art galleries. So I wanted to be able to say that, you know, we're, we're very versatile, our culture is versatile. We can be anywhere and we can be celebrated and experienced um, through different, you know, mediums. And that's when I landed on fashion. So, yeah, and pushing back on that was, yeah, it just sort of proved my point, I suppose, to myself. And um, just, I mean, I'm the kind of person that you can tell me not to do something and I'll purposely do the opposite until it works and I'll make it work. <laughs> Nice, a little bit of rebellion always goes a long way and yeah. that's pushing those doors open. Like Belinda said, um, like the reason that I do what I do is because I have children and nieces and my niece has a child, which also makes me a grandma. So, um, yeah, it's for the other kids. So you're opening doors for the younger generation to come through. So thanks for all the work that you're doing. Yeah. I feel you down the grandma thing too. I've got about 30 nieces and nephews, so I understand. <laughs> Is that all? Only 30? Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm one of seven. Uh, yeah, I'm one of seven. I'm the baby. So, yeah, we've got a lot of kids. <laughs> uh, well done. The, the, the baby making noise. The baby making noise. Um, uh, thanks for that, uh, Leandra. Um, next, uh, next guest is Socrates Otto. He's a, an, a, one of our country's most versatile actors, um, writers, directors, uh, in the TV and film industry. So I'll pass it over to Socrates and, you know, he can introduce himself. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Bobby, for that intro. And thanks, Steph and Zeph and Zepha. I mean, props, the youngest host of Imagination TV so far. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, and also, how wonderful to hear um, and share the panel with Belinda and Leandra. You girls are inspirational just hearing your, your tales. Uh, yeah, so Bobby, thanks for that introduction. My name's Socrates Otto. I'm an actor. I've been an actor for about 20 years um, here in Australia and also overseas. I'm uh, also a writer and a director. And I am I call myself a coach, an acting coach, but it's kind of um, extended to the point where now I like to I like to kind of uh, have discussions and conversations about mental health a lot of the time in all my work and um, demystifying the language around it and normalising those conversations, especially things that are often deemed a bit taboo, um, especially towards minorities. Uh, my whole uh, emphasis is to um, kind of resuscitate people's confidence and bring them back to their full potential and that's what's really inspiring me to continue with all my work from here on in. Let's 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 stay with that. I, I yeah. heard 
um, in your in your um, dialogue just now that you said you you were a coach and like I'm a basketball coach too. So like I'm always dealing with kids and and what have you. Uh, even in my work now, I love working with my young people. So yeah. as a coach, how how do you tie in not being a savior and being a mentor? How do you tie that in? With what yeah, I, I think Bobby for me. And I think it, it stems back to me as a, as a kid. Often I was silenced. Uh, in fact, I was bullied for a, for a number of years and I stopped going to school and I felt like I didn't have any voice. And I felt like I, I was often spoken down to and told I, I didn't belong and I would never amount to anything. And therefore I kind of found my mentors through a lot of artists uh, who were deemed as underdogs as well, writers, painters who didn't have a voice but were minor minorities. And it made me feel like I wasn't alone and that I could share in that conversation. So the way I coach or the way I teach, um, and I've had students from 16 years old to 70 years old as well, is that I ensure that the conversation has no ego whatsoever and that we're equals, that I can certainly learn from them. In fact, I'm often wanting to learn from them, uh, from, from the people that I speak to, the I coach, and to really encourage their voice, to make sure that I'm listening to exactly what they're saying, and to really kind of distill it to its core essence, to, to kind of eradicating fear and eradicating a lot of noise that we often hear through media, through whatever stereotype, through uh, whatever kind of bullying we've been indoctrinated with. And to really get to the core of them and to kind of say, I'm here for you, I'm going to support you, and I'm going to encourage you to, um, you know, to, 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 to lead as well, you know. Um, and that, that seems to really ignite their soul, you know, and I see the spark and, and it reminds me of me when I was a younger when I was younger and that's, that's what, what made me kind of go, you know what, I actually do belong here and I do have a voice and I do have a story to tell. And I can inspire <laughs> and I can be inspired. You know, it never stops. It keeps me young, actually. <laughs> nah, man, hey, we got to do what we got to do to stay young. Definitely. Gotta totally. do. Um, hey, Zephyr, we got some comments coming through on, on our YouTube live chat. So you want to read some of those? Sure. I'll have a go. So um, everyone's really loving seeing Bobby, Steph and me hosting today. And... Everyone says, Blinda, you're really a wonder woman. And everyone's so excited to see you on the show today. Oh, that's just beautiful, Seth. You know what's so cute about that? My little girl calls me Wonder Woman. She bought me a Wonder Woman cup. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can I very quickly say, I feel so bad. My beautiful cousin's on the board, Taryn Marks. But, so she was the direct link. But I was trying to sort of talk to my linkage to AIM and, and some of my uh, nieces and nephews had the blessing of being to work. So, you know, um, I just want to acknowledge how brave, dynamic, creative AIM is and the work that you do. Um, it touches so many of our mob. And, you know, to be in here and have that presence of other beautiful people, um, you know, with Leandra and Socrates in this, in this space, I just feel absolutely blessed to have an opportunity to yarn. And um, that's really amazing, Blinda. Everyone's also saying, Socrates, they're really stoked that you're here, says Brandon. Brandon's left a lot of wonderful comments. And, yeah. Well, the feel, feeling's mutual. It, it, it's exactly what Belinda said. This kind of yarn with this kind of energy, you know, it's transferring and it's, it's, it's really special. It's really special. Talking and conversing heals everything. I really believe that. So thank you. And Brandon's also said to you, Socrates, what's the hardest thing you've experienced? Uh, probably being bullying, bullied, sorry, and, and silenced for, for uh, and I, Zephyr, I was, I was your age. I was 12 and I, I stopped going to school and it was, it was quite uh, vicious. Uh, uh, so it's kind of picking, and those things, this is also, Bobby, why I, I, when I, when I mentor people and I, I kind of, um, I don't try and save them and, and give them the solution, but I kind of just tell my story and say that, that and kind of um, uh, 
illuminate the consequences, the far-reaching consequences of, of, of bullying because though because that stuff sticks with you and it's about learning how to manage it and how to not let it um, suffocate you. So for me, Zephyr, that was, that was the biggest thing for me to kind of go, okay, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. I feel this small and to kind of rebuild myself through my mentors and to achieve what I've achieved in my life and, and to, to always remain as compassionate, as generous, as grateful. And like I said, inspired by seeing and hearing so many different stories. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. So bullying was, was for me. And, that, and that's why I kind of now focus the rest of my life on, on eradicating that and um, helping kids, anyone through it. That's really nice, Socrates. So, Brandon, there's your answer. And it's I find it really nice that you've had mentors in your life and now you, like, are one and you're helping other children get through what you've been. Totally, totally. It's, it's uh, yeah, it, it, it makes life um, so rich, <laughs> you know. You guys so, are the future. It's, it's what Belinda said. You guys are the future. What you're doing is is incredible. I take my hat off to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll just give this next one to Steph. Thanks, Steph. Um, awesome line of questioning as well. I do have a couple of burning questions and I'd like to start with Belinda. Um, I definitely um, know that some of the work that you're involved in, like as well as being inspiring when you look inspiring, when you look at the stats, it can be pretty heavy on the heart. Um, I just want to know what you think the best way to eliminate like saviorism in that space to get good outcomes for the, the kids that you work with. Um, I think it's a love, hope and love campaign is one of them that you're um, running. Look, I, you know, the, the campaign and what I love about the Love and Hope campaign, we were um, a part of something that um, facilitated a workshop for young people and those young people really came Sorry, my daughter's just oh, walked in. I'm on, I can't. Hi, Mandy. We're talking. They're about to use drills and hammers. Okay, thank you for the heads up, sweetie. I'm in the middle of something. Well, welcome to uh, <laughs> holiday time in the house. <laughs> um, if there is drills, there is some stuff happening in the background. My sincere apologies. I'm a little bit lost in the mix there. The Love and Hope campaign was a workshop. It's okay, Belinda. You're Wonder Woman. <laughs> you can multitask, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> oh my God, my daughter. Anyway, um, young people, uh, they shared their views. The workshop was a music mentoring workshop. Um, and, you know, how critical love and hope is not only in how we support and see each other, but the environments that we create. So, whether it's schools, home environments, communities. Um, you know, how through our own challenges where love and hope actually can build um, possibilities for any person and particularly our young people. I do want to go back to listening to yourselves, listening to what you know in your heart of hearts, you know, what's what's those feelings that come up that you don't quite know what to do with and that's the opportunity that the likes of mentors and, and people that you love and trust, that you can get that out of yourself you know, speak it out because once it's out, at least it can be shared and worked through. Um, and, you know, where we think about um, how we can be loving and reach out to people that we know aren't doing well um, is really critical. Uh, so um, please, through your own actions of self-love, never, ever, ever think that you are alone. Never. Because there is always somebody there. And if you don't feel safe with the immediate people in your family, there are networks and there are there are contact numbers, whether it's local AMSs, um, Aboriginal Medical Services or Lifeline or Kids Helpline. Please, 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 you reach out um, if you don't feel good and have those conversations because um, you are the most sacred things, the most sacred things. And, you know, being a part of um, the oldest living culture of the world and, and some young people that will have their own cultural history, that is so critical to who we are and the fabric of society and you've got a unique offering and gift that we just want to see it's the best thing you can give to everybody that's such a beautiful message and um i love the point of listening to yourself i've had a couple of 
hard years and I've had to make some decisions where no one else could do it. And it was, um, there was no answers provided. I had to find the right answer within myself as well and just trust that I was making the right decision. And mentors definitely played a, a huge role for me in the last couple of years. So thanks for that amazing message. I felt like you're talking directly to me. <laughs> um, I also have some, uh, a question for Leandra. Um, whenever I do these shows, I try and sort of pull out some really practical advice for the kids that we're working with. And as an entrepreneur, um, do you have any advice for young people that are thinking of taking up um, design, in, something in the design industry? Yeah, um, I think that definitely, you know, you'll be amazed at how many people do want to help you. So going off what Bianca said, you know, don't be scared to, to reach out to somebody if you've been following them on Instagram or, you know, social media or you know someone. Don't be scared to ask, hey, can you help me? Um, you know, there's so much advice and so much help there on offer and you'll be su surprised at how amazing the community is, not just the design and, you know, community in fashion, but also the community in entrepreneurship and in business. I mean, I've got friends that aren't in fashion that have given me a wealth of knowledge on just how to run and own a business, which um, I think, you know, comes first and foremost. Yeah, I get to be creative and I'm in a more creative industry, but it's really important to understand, you know, you don't want to, um, you know, you need to know if you're wanting to stick around for a few years and not just be sort of a one hit wonder in, in a sense. Um, definitely don't be scared to ask, um, you know, somebody to have a conversation. The other thing that I think is really, really important is, Going off what Belinda said, you need to, yeah, follow, stay close to what that vision is that you had. You know, what is that goal? Set those long-term goals, set those long short-term goals and put in, put in the steps to actually get there. It's not going to happen overnight and, you know, it's not going really to be easy, but if you put in the groundwork day-to-day, week-to-week, you know, you'll got, start coming towards those goals. One of the biggest things that I'm a huge believer in, I'm also a high school teacher by, um, you know, my, my other life. And so I cannot, you know, push enough how important education is. And I don't mean just education in a classroom. I mean all types of education, you know, taking that beyond the classroom if, you know, a classroom environment isn't where you feel most comfortable. That's fine, you know. You can access resources from all over, from different people through, you know, conversation, through the internet, read a book instead if that's what you're more comfortable doing. There's so many ways for you to be able to access education. And now with, you know, the 21st century and there's so much knowledge at your fingertips, um, use it, you know, arm yourself as much education and knowledge as possible. So then you know how to make some of those tough decisions down the track or you know how to deal with, you know, a situation that arises that you weren't, you know, going to predict, for example. Um, yeah, build a strong network of people around you that aren't just going to always tell you what you want to hear but are going to help you with, you know, constructive criticism. I'm really lucky that I have that around that, you know, I'm able to call on different people for different opinions um, to get, a, you know, different views. And I think that's really important. Yeah, great view. Um, I think sometimes we, all, we look at education as just being inside the schoolyard instead of having like this holistic approach because yeah. we can learn everywhere in the world. Um, I also love that you said Especially don't be Especially in our communities. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, you also mentioned like don't be scared to reach out and that's not always an easy thing to do. I'm going to link this no, to the work not. that Socrates actually does with demystifying um, fear and like we know that um, fear of failure and change can sometimes paralyse us. So mm -hmm. what, what are some practical things that, or how do you demystify fear so that we can get on the other side of that? How do, you yeah, how do I demystify? Oh. oh, is that for me or for Socrates? Sorry. We can share. <laughs> Sorry, Leandra, Leandra, we can, can share. share. <laughs> <laughs> you, can share. <laughs> you, can, you can give me the answer. <laughs> no, I don't have the answer. <laughs> I'm one of those people that I've just got to pull the trigger and hope it works out. Yeah. That's what I, that's my demystifying. <laughs> well, that's it. That, that, that's all. I agree, Leandra. I agree with me. It's kind of like fear can cripple you. Fear can cripple you and it can actually make you even more lonely. And, and going on what uh, Belinda was saying about how 
you know, <laughs> loneliness and all those kind of suicidal stats, it's, it's, it's the, for me, loneliness is the worst place on earth. And it, 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 being crippled by fear and a manifestation of other people's fear, you know, we've got one life. So what Leandra said, pull the trigger and, and you know, jump. So I, I kind of go, let's tackle it head on. And 99% and of the time when I have, um, all the fear has kind of eroded and I've discovered so many different things. Whether, whether or not, you know, I, I fall and I got to pick myself up again, it's so much better to be active and going forward than kind of just procrastinate and be crippled by something that doesn't really exist in a sense, Steph. Our fear is kind of a figment of our imagination or someone's projected fear, do you know? Uh, and, and going back to everything you said, holistic, um, education's holistic, uh, Belinda and Leandra, about talking. For me, it's just mm -hmm. talking. It's actually having the conversation with someone you trust to kind of go, I'm scared. And as soon as you do, that's when it starts to erode away. Yeah, that's that's. Um, yeah, you find those little things that you didn't know that it, you're it, capable of. So build exactly, yourself belief Steph. along the way. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it, it's it's talking. It's talking. Awesome. About Thanks, it. guys. Yeah. Um, back I, to that the was game. amazing, yeah. everyone. Does anyone else um, have any questions for our other people on the panel? Yeah, I have a question. And this, this question is for Socrates. Um, of your three roles, um, Robert Robertson, Maxine Conway, um, and Justin Comedy, which, which one of those three was your favorite and why? Probably playing Maxine Conway, who um, was a transgender character in the show Wentworth, a prison drama. And um, Again, Maxine represented a minority uh, back in, it was about four years ago, I think, when she came on um, on screen and a lot of the dialogue, a lot of, a lot of, sorry, a lot of the dialogue around trans people wasn't really potent. So we were very um, unsure of what trans meant, uh, especially here in Australia. So that broke a lot of stereotypes and a lot of people around the world, all ages, all um, sexualities, all genders, um, contacted me and said, thank you for that representation because it made me feel less alone. It's made me feel less alone and less like I don't have a voice. So that, um, you know, and also also playing, you know, as an actor, playing something that you would never imagine playing was, was a, you know, going back to Steph, it was very scary, but I thought, you know, I can't not tackle this and kind of uncover what this means. So for, for various reasons, Bobby, I'd say Maxine from Wentworth was my favourite. The Reach. Mm. That's amazing, Socrates. I'm just going to interrupt here because a question from one of our comments was really good and I feel like it needs to be shared. Um, Brandon has said, fear does make us lonely and can someone share a story of how you got out? Or maybe you, Socrates, because you've been there. Uh... Look, I think it was it was through talking to people. I was, you know, I I just I can't stress enough what bullying and what uh, being told you represent can do to someone's psychology. Uh, we all know that. We all know that with what happens, you know, with what's happening right now around the world with the Black Lives Matter movement. Being told that you you don't belong and you're lesser than can, can really harm you. And, and you can think about, you know, ending your life. Uh, so I knew that within I had a spark, you know, because I grew up so happy and I grew up such a bundle of light and I, I, I love the arts and I love creativity. I love music, but I was silenced for whatever reason growing up. And I was so scared. I was made to, to feel so scared about my life and who I was. You know, there was a lot of judgment involved, even mm. self-judgment and hatred that came in. Mm. But I knew the spark inside was saying, no, 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 hang on. There's something more there. There's something more there. So for me, Zephyr, I, 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 it's not one story. It's just a culmination of a time in my life where I was so overwhelmed by fear that I kind of went into a ball and I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here until I started to talk about it. And it was terrifying. 
it was terrifying, but it was from one person to another to another made me feel like I was less alone and that I had potential to be here. I needed to be, I had worth to be here. And slowly I just, I just grew and I kind of reconnected with that spark in my youth that said, yeah, you're special, <laughs> you know? That's Which I try and do now to people because we all, we all are equal. We're all equal and we all belong. We all yeah. got a voice, you know? Yeah, I'll just pass this on to Buddy, Bobby. Thanks for that, Zeph. Um, before we wrap up, I'll just read one more comment. And I think like Belinda, Leandra, and Socrates yourself, um, this, this comment came from Janae Ward. Great advice, ask questions, build your visions and learn as much as you can. And I felt like everything um, you three shared today um, was inspirational for our young people that we're, that we're working with and working for. So I'd like to thank you three for that. Thank you, Bobby. Um, I, I do want to do a, a quick shout out, if that's okay, with some of the work that um, that is happening with Culture's Life on our Aboriginal-led activity. Um, you know, the thing that what we know is when our people work in our communities and provide safe places for our young people to feel valued and particularly, you know, whether it's a firm, um, rekindle, revitalise, provide platforms where their cultural expression is at their fullest, that they can feel, um, you know, truly, I guess, the fullest version of themselves. And, you know, in, in saying that, going back to what was being talked about with fear and, and feeling lonely, um, the most freeing experience is, is being able to, 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 to love who you are. And it sounds, you know, sometimes for me, we'll to love yourself was seen as the wrong thing to be. Um, and this is about, you know, actually paying homage and the best, most deepest respect to the people who have gone before you because they lived and they survived and they chose to keep getting up and, you know, expressing platforms. And, you know, for Socrates, you know, and his artistic expression and this beautiful creative woman in her business and entrepreneurial expression of her herself through that work, where we can find our self-freedom in our work and our, that, that that's the commitment that we, um, we hope when we back, back our projects on the ground is that those environments, those cultural entrepreneurs that do work with our young people, that they create the platform for, for our young people to be the fullest version of themselves. So... Um, thanks for having me today and what a pleasure it's been to just hear and listen to some outstanding humans in the mix um, and to those young people out there listening, um, you know, uh, just, just take that moment always to remember. Remember the people that have gone before you and the, the whispers, the whispers that they say to you when you may be alone and you may not be feeling able to, to speak you know, take those moments, listen to them and, and be brave enough to move forward and, and talk through and take those actions you need. Thank you. Thank you for that, Belinda. Yeah, I would just like to jump in really quickly as well and say if anybody is thinking about starting a business or anything in that space, it doesn't have to be just in, you know, the fashion industry, please feel free to reach out. Um, I might not have all the answers, but I have a great network of people that I am, you know, friends with and that I know that I can always help connect you with the, you know, people that might be able to be more valuable to you. That might not be today, it might not be in six months time, it might be three years down the track. Please don't be scared to um, message or, you know, send me an email or whatever it is. I'd always be happy to help and have a conversation. Um, and yeah, at least try and point you in the right direction. Thank you, Leandra. Um, Zeph, we might throw it back over to you and you know, give us a, a highlight from today. I know we had a lot of fantastic information, a lot of useful information, a lot of inspiring information. Give us something that really grabbed you today. And then after you do that, you can, you can close up the show. Well, um, well, I loved the whole show. I love 
everyone's story here is really amazing and critics i love that you're a writer director actor it's really amazing leandra i'm sure your art is beautiful and oh, the wonder woman like you're like becoming a symbol for everyone and love you here Thanks, Sue. Um, so my main highlight was just being here. It's my third time being on the show, second time co-hosting. And thanks everyone for letting me be here. And I guess that's the end of episode 69, week 15. Bye everyone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.